This begins in silence. Not the kind that feels peaceful, but the kind that feels unfinished. In a quiet corner of the 2009 Geneva Motor Show, a father and son unveiled something strange. A small, round car, no engine rumble, no exhaust pipe, no gasoline. It didn't run on fuel or batteries or anything you'd expect. It ran on air, compressed, stored, and released. They said it was the future. Big companies lined up. Promises were made. A launch was set. And then, nothing. No cars, no headlines, just quiet. So what happened to the world's first air-powered car? Let's find out. The dream at Geneva. The motor show in Geneva is where the giants gather. Ferrari, Mercedes, and McLaren, all flexing their muscle and elegance under blinding lights. But in 2009, tucked into a modest stall away from the spectacle, was something that looked like it didn't belong. It was called the AirPod, a bubbly, almost toy-like vehicle no taller than a refrigerator. Its creators, Guy and Cyril Negre, stood beside it, not showmen, but engineers. What they had built was a car powered by compressed air, not hybrid, not electric, just air. At first glance, it felt too simple to be real, but it wasn't just a showpiece. They had working prototypes, actual contracts, Tata Motors of India bought the rights to manufacture them. Air France was considering them for airport use. Cities in Europe were in talks. The plan was bold. Launch production in India. Start small, scale fast. Refuel in 90 seconds. Zero emissions, zero fuel bill. The kind of solution you dream up during a climate crisis. But today, you won't find an air pod on any street. No production lines, no waiting lists. The air-powered revolution made a lot of noise that year. Then it vanished, inside the engine. To understand how the AirPod was supposed to work, you need to forget what you know about engines. There's no combustion here, no spark, no battery cells are quietly draining. Just air, high-pressure air, doing all the pushing. The idea is simple in theory. Store compressed air in a tank. Feed it into a piston chamber. Let the expanding gas do the work. The pressure forces a piston down. That movement turns a crank. The crank turns the wheels. When the piston returns, the air is released, cold and clean. Now scale that up. The team at MDI didn't just copy old pneumatic tools. They created something new, a dual piston system. One small, one large. As the compressed air moves from one chamber to the next, it still has just enough energy to keep the system going. The smaller piston starts the work. The larger one finishes it. Less waste, more distance. They even claimed the expanding air would help regulate the engine's temperature. No overheating, no wasted heat, no emissions. In theory, it all worked. And they proved it in test drives. But engineering is only half the story. The real test was everything else. The promise of the AirPod. At first glance, the AirPods looked like a cartoon, small, round, and oddly cheerful. But beneath the playful shell was a quiet kind of rebellion. This wasn't just a car. It was a challenge to everything the automotive world thought it needed. The original prototype weighed just 220 kilograms. It could travel up to 200 kilometers on a full tank of air. Top speed? About 40 miles per hour. But the real selling point wasn't performance. It was simple. You could refill the tank in under two minutes at a high-pressure station, or you could plug it in at home, let the built-in compressor do its work overnight, and wake up to a full tank of air. No tailpipe, no fuel bill, no carbon guilt. For urban life, it made sense. Compact, cheap to run, clean. Later, MDI introduced a new version, the AirPod 2.0. Heavier, slower, shorter range. The specs were trimmed back. The weight went up. Questions started circling. Was it still revolutionary or was it just different? MDI blamed delays on regulations, licensing issues, politics. But even then, the promise remained. An engine powered by the same thing we breathe. And a world that seemed ready for it. Cracks in the foundation. 
The AirPods had momentum, prototypes on the road, media coverage, major players are involved. For a brief moment, it felt like this strange little car might change the game. Then it stalled. Tata Motors, once poised to manufacture the AirPods in India, quietly stepped away. Air France KLM, which had planned to test them at airports, faded from the conversation. Even a $5 million investment from Shark Tank collapsed. The reason? Disagreements over licensing rights for North America. On the surface, it looked like a business drama, legal hurdles, missed deadlines. But beneath that, maybe something more troubling. Compressed air as fuel sounds magical. But turning that magic into motion, into range, into torque, it's harder than it seems. Some started to whisper that the AirPods' real problem wasn't the business model. It was the engine. That maybe, despite the clever mechanics and lightweight shell, the physics just didn't add up. MDI stood by its tech, said regulators were slow, said the world wasn't ready. But the more deals collapsed, the more it seemed like the car had hit a wall, not on the track, but in the laws of thermodynamics. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. When physics fights back. The beauty of the air engine is its simplicity, but simplicity doesn't always win against physics. Compressed air stores energy, yes, but not very efficiently. When you pressurize air into a tank, you're wasting electricity. And when you release that air into an engine, it expands and cools. That cooling drops the pressure. That drop weakens the power. It's a built-in flaw, one you can't design away. On paper, MDI's tank held 80 kilograms of compressed air. Fully expanded, it could store up to 11.2 kilowatt hours of energy. That sounds impressive until you try to use it. Just dropping the pressure from 350 bar to 20 bar wastes nearly half of that stored energy. Suddenly, you're down to 5.6 kilowatt hours. In real-world testing, even less. Their best results showed only 4.5. Some independent analysts went further, estimating the car could only deliver 1.9 kilowatt hours to the wheels. That's not even enough to power most electric scooters for long. It wasn't just about how far the car could go. It was about how much energy it took to make that happen. And if the math didn't work, then neither would the car. The real range myth. MDI claimed the AirPod could travel 160 kilometers on a full tank. It sounded good, especially with a refill time of under two minutes. But outside experts weren't buying it. The numbers just didn't line up. When tested under real conditions, the range dropped. Some estimates put it at just 68 kilometers. Others were less generous. Not because of bad driving or poor road conditions, but because of the physics inside the tank. Compressed air holds less energy than a lithium battery, and the process of compression itself is energy-hungry. The compressors MDI used were only about 58% efficient. Combine that with losses in the engine and drivetrain, and the total plug-to-wheel efficiency ended up around 23%. Electric vehicles, by comparison, often exceed 70%. Even if you refilled using renewable power, you were still losing most of it, just storing and releasing the air. The AirPod wasn't just up against skepticism. It was up against the numbers. And numbers don't bend easily. The dream of a clean, fast, and long-range vehicle powered by air was still alive. But the distance it could travel on a single breath? That dream was starting to shrink. Torque, cooling, and the limits of air. Even if you could ignore the range issue, another problem lingered. Torque. That low-end force that gets a vehicle moving from a standstill. It's where electric motors shine. But for air engines, it's a struggle. As the compressed air expands inside the cylinder, it cools rapidly. That cooling drops pressure even further, making it harder to generate the force needed to move the car, especially uphill or underload. And unless you add external heating, which kills efficiency, you're stuck with what's left. MDI tried to counteract this. Their design reused exhaust air to pre-warm the intake. Lightweight materials reduced rolling resistance. Narrow tires helped cut friction. And with a bit of momentum, the AirPod could cruise along city streets without needing much power. They insisted it had strong torque for its class. It could climb urban inclines. That it could serve a niche. 
But those promises weren't scalable. Years ago, they spoke about air-powered buses, about scaling the tech up. Today, those plans are gone. In a way, the AirPods weren't defeated by competitors. It was cornered by the very thing that gave it life. Air. Still breathing? The AirPod isn't dead. Not completely. Zero pollution motors in the U.S. still offers reservations. Air Future in New Zealand is pitching to cities. And engineers in Canada are rethinking the tech altogether. They're trying rotary engines, lower pressures, smart thermal systems. Their latest prototype hit 140 kilometers with 90% of EV efficiency. Not game-changing, but not bad for a car powered by air. No lithium, no cobalt, no mining, just pressure and motion. It won't replace Tesla. But maybe it could live in their shadow. Quietly doing what it was always meant to do, moving people in cleaner ways. The dream isn't gone, just waiting to evolve. The AirPod was supposed to change how we moved through cities. Light, clean, simple. It promised a world powered not by fuel or batteries, but by the air around us. That promise never came true, not yet. Whether it was flawed physics, business missteps, or just bad timing, the dream drifted away. But somewhere in small labs and quiet workshops, others are still chasing it. The idea isn't dead. It's just waiting to breathe again. And maybe one day the sound you'll hear on a busy street won't be an engine roaring to life. It'll be something softer, a whisper of air.